right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I think we've never had the house this packed, and I'm really, really happy about this. My name is Philip, and I come from a company called Le Wagon, if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> and what we do is we search for people that have the following problem. People that have amazing ideas, but just don't know how to build them. Or people that work with developers every single day, but don't understand a single word of what they're saying. Because let's be honest, developers have their very own language. And what we do is we bring technical skills to creative people. We teach you how to code. And the way we do this is in a bootcamp, it's nine weeks long. It's four, 450 to 500 hours of coding that actually the people to my left here have just gone through. And we've built our own tools for this, our own pedagogy. We're actually originally from France, from Paris. Le Wagon, who would have thought? <laughs> and we are now in 27 cities worldwide. We have more than 2,800 alumni. And we teach you full stack web development. What that means is we teach you both backend and frontend development. If you don't know what that means, come talk to me or any one of those 32 amazing people. Our alumni have built more than 500 products. We have just, or we will be adding 32, no, bullshit. We will be adding nine to that tonight. <laughs> and actually we have demo days in Paris with another 60 people and in London with another 30. And I think, where else? Uh, Montreal, I think, is demoing today as well. Over 120 startups have come out of Le Wagon, raising quite a bit of money, actually. Over time, Apple just acquired um, a company that was founded, co-founded by a Le Wagon alumni around about six months ago. And we are, and we have been for the last two years, the world's best rated coding bootcamp. And we're quite proud of that. Our alumni split into around about three groups. One third of them goes on to become developers, like Say, for example, we, she was a classical trained violinist, playing in orchestras in the US, in Finland, and then deciding, all right, I'm gonna learn to code. It's a really cute story, it's her boyfriend uh, who was a coder, they met, um, then she decided, okay, if he can do it, I can do it. Uh, <laughs> she learned to code with us, and literally one week afterwards, he proposed to her and they're married now. Really cute. <laughs> Uh, one third of our alumni go on, go on and found their own company or actually uh, start working as freelancers. And one third do product management, technical sales, consulting, these kind of roles. Um, surprisingly, if you know about technology, if you know how to code, people like to hire you. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, TechCrunch likes us quite a bit, but the amazing thing about Le Wagon and that comes really from myself, but you can ask anyone who has one of these shirts or will be here on stage tonight. The amazing thing about Le Wagon is actually the community. It's the 2,800 people, with you 2,832, that have learned to code with us over the years, that are spread all over the world. We now have offices ranging literally from everywhere uh, we are in Melbourne, we are in Montreal, and if you want to learn how to code on the beach, we're even in Bali by now. <laughs> and that's people that are interested in technology, that know how to code, that love entrepreneurship, and that's just the greatest community to be a part of that you can think of, if you ask me. So, thank you all very, very much for coming. And it is my great pleasure to actually introduce the first pitch tonight. Um, a little, little side story about myself. So I have two siblings, and um, we all really, really love to read. We've loved to read from, well, my sister and I love to read from a very young age. My brother was a little bit of a late bloomer, um, but even he eventually came around, and that's why I really, really love the first project of tonight. Give it up for Lina. Hi, everybody. My name is Lina, and I'm going to present Book It to you tonight. 
So let me start off with a little story. I'm actually the oldest of five siblings at home. And as some of you might know, sometimes it has advantages, but it also has some disadvantages to be the oldest one. So I flew home last weekend, and my parents told me that I had to watch out for my little sisters on a Friday night, which sucks, to be honest. But I did it, and yeah, I flew home, and I invited some friends over for dinner for that night. And usually, my sisters are really easy to fall, like they immediately fall asleep after dinner, but that night was terrible. My little sister, Ida, she's six years old, she just didn't want to fall asleep. And I, I completely, I didn't know what to do anymore. It was really terrible, so I called my mom. Mom, please help me. What am I supposed to do? Ida just won't fall asleep. And she told me, there's this amazing new website online. It's called bookets.fun, where you can download a personalized story for Ida. And she promised me, uh, Ida is going to fall asleep immediately. So let me show you what I did, actually. I went, went to this website. I, let's check it out together. How does it actually work? So first of all, you find a story. So you enter the problem of the child. So I, probably I can enter sleep for Ida because Ida has sleeping issues. Then as a second point, I could personalize the story immediately. And for me, the biggest benefit is I could immediately download it to my iPad, which was great. Let's check out the website a little further. What else can I do? So here I can see the latest releases book, book it says. Let's check out some of these books. But actually here I don't really know which category this is, so let's go back to the top and search for sleeping problems. Let's type in sleep. Yeah, we have sometimes have some technical issues, but it's gonna load, I'm sure. I honestly think it's the internet in this factory, because we're... Great. So now I can finally see all of the books regarding sleeping issues. So maybe let's check out the first one. This has a star rating of four. It sounds pretty good, but Ida is actually not that much into pigs. She's rather into monkeys. So I add this one to my favorite list. And also, this one costs 21 euros. It's out of my budget today. My maximum budget is 20 euros for tonight. And, but I'm sure my mom maybe want to buy it at a later stage. So let's, let's actually person, like, personalize a little more and search on monkeys in the category sleep with a max price of 20 euros. Yes, I want to do that. Let's check out if Bookets actually has monkeys, bo monkeys books. Great, they do have two monkeys books. And I want to check out the ratings of this. This has a rating of three stars. I think it's not good. And it's also for children in the age between two and three. I think my, old, my sister is way too old for this. So I'm going to go for a little monkey. Let's take a closer look to little monkey. So little monkey is a touching tale of a monkey who struggles with sleeping through the whole night. This sounds like Ida's going to like it. Ida has sleeping problems. This fits her story completely. It has a star rating of 4.7, and I actually want to see if this is really true. I want to read some real reviews. So let's roll down and see if this book has some real reviews. Great, it actually has some amazing reviews. A lot of people like it. Ingrid loves it, Thomas loves it, and Kerstin obviously has a child called Mia, and she loves it too. So, so I think Ida's gonna love it. Let's start personalizing this book. So. Her name is Ida, she's six years old, and a girl. Let's save this. This is actually amazing. Now I can even preview my own book. Let's see, let's check this one out. Oh, great. So I, bought, I think this, I like, really like the image, but let's see if we can read some text. Great, the name is personalized to Ida. Let's read a little bit in this book. I am Ida, and I'm a beautiful little monkey who lives in a big forest surrounded by trees and a lot of animals. This sounds like Ida's really gonna like it. I think I'm gonna buy this book. So let's check first if the summary is correct. Her name is Ida, she's a girl and she's six years old. This all seems correct. It's also in my budget. Let's finally pay with card. 
I have some great credentials. <laughs> so my order is now confirmed, great. Now how can I download this book? I think I have to go to the dashboard side, let's do that, and download this book for Ida. So as you can see here, my mom obviously already bought some books for Ida, so I think she's definitely gonna fall asleep tonight. Let's download the book, Little Monkey. Great, now I have the PDF on my iPad. I'm gonna read it out to Ida and she will fall asleep immediately. Thank you, also thanks to my amazing team. Let's get them up to stage. Danja. Danja, Daniel and Simon, thank you. Congratulations uh, to Lina and the whole team. That was a really awesome product and I can't wait for you to actually launch this. Um, I think especially downloading these that quickly is amazing. Now, in this batch we had something new. We had not one parent, we had not two parents, actually we had three dads in this batch, which proved to be a little bit of a logistical challenge because, of course, if you have a kid at home, you always need to figure out, okay, who's going to take care of that kid. And at the end of our program, those dads decided to join forces and decided to build an application to tackle just that. Give it up for Achilles. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Achilles, and I'm a dad, as Philip just told. Um, that's not the problem, but uh, <laughs> the problem is finding the right kindergarten for your child. So uh, just uh, two weeks ago, over 3,000 parents went uh, demonstrating in Berlin against the situation that we're facing here. We have uh, about 175 spots for children, but nonetheless, we have more than 2,000 missing. So this is where the pain comes. Um, how are you going to find the right spot? And uh, pretty soon after uh, going to one or two kitas, you realize kita is the German word for kindergarten, you realize uh, this is going to be a long process and this is going to be a lot of applications. So how are you going to manage this process when one person is working full day and the other person is taking care of your little child all day long? I can tell you this is a painful process, a lot of Excel sheets, a lot of miscommunication. Who did you call? Who did she call? Do you have to call them again because you have to show interest? Or did they tell you, hey, everyone is calling every day, please don't ever call again? <laughs> and um, so all this information, where do you put it, extra sheets, doesn't work. But I heard about this amazing app <laughs> that three dudes uh, in Berlin at Le Wagon coded. So let's check it out. Um, Nice, so here's the website, looks super nice, happy children, that's how I want to be with my child, so, uh, happy. So, um, <laughs> it tells me put in my address, yes, but I want to have more explanation, so um, I'm looking at the website, and it tells me in German, wie funktioniert die Suche, how does work, the search work? Okay, so I can put in my address, so it means I can probably um, search uh, places close to my uh, home or to my work, and then I can set some filters, also interesting because you all well, kids have different educational styles and some are bilingual and whatever. And then finally you can also save them and contact them, which is great. And most happy, uh, um, yeah, which is great, it's really good tool. So let's try this out. Um, but first of all, I want to actually check out how many kitas there are. So let's go on the top and we check out all kitas. And I see, wow, over 2,500 kitas. I can tell you, a lot of them don't even have a website. So how are you going to find them? This is the tool for it. Cool. So let's, let's try to find the right one for me. I'm living in Kreuzberg, so I want to, uh, I want to check it out in Kreuzberg and um, have something close to my place. So I'm going to filter this, and I have still 178, which is much better, but I'm not going to write 178 mails today, so 
Let's filter a little bit more. Um, let's uh, put in languages. And I'm going to put in Turkish, because quite spec. <laughs> so here we go. And uh, yeah, nice. Now we have only uh, 10 kitas left. And I immediately jump into one. Um, and yes, again, please, Turkish, because quite spec, I said before. <laughs> cool. So now we have uh, the kitas actually in my district that are pretty close and have the right uh, preference for me. So I want to add them to my, um, to my favorites. And because I love to do this, I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> OK, scroll down. I'm going to add this to my favorites. And um, then, oh, nice, beautiful hearts. And I, OK, enough. So I see on the top, uh, the first one is called uh, um, Little horror cabinet, maybe not the one I want to check out. So let's go into the second one because this one is also pretty close to my place. I can see it's pretty close to my place. It's cool. I like it. I love that. So um, I see the educational style. I see all the information I need, and I even see the languages. And I, that's great because I want my child to grow up bilingual, just like I did. Speaks Turkish, also Italian. Nice, cool. I like it. So let's contact this kita. Cool, so here's a simple form. I'm going to write a subject. I'm going to write a short text. Hey, guys, do you have a spot for my child? And last but not least, I see a little icon and an alert. Cool, this is a very cool feature. Actually, I can uh, set a reminder for me to call them again, because usually I forget that stuff. <laughs> or I don't put it on the extra sheet. So I'm going to put it here in for uh, two weeks or three weeks. Yeah, three weeks is good. Save. And I'm landing in my inbox and I see, wow, there are a lot of messages. My wife has been using this and she didn't tell me about it. But cool. So I can see what she uh, has been writing. So check it out. Uh, a lot of mails. Um, all right, let's check out one email. OK, I can see the whole uh, communication. This is cool. I have all at one spot. It's all pretty clear to me. OK, go back. And um, now, um, Actually, I just see I have an alert. There's a key that it wants me to call them. So sorry, guys. I want to really show you more of this website, but I have to call them right now. So thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you to my team, uh, Rafi. So, so these are the three dads. <laughs> thank you. So those were the three dads, and out of interest, okay, who here has siblings? Let's start with that, Mick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew it. Okay, who here has kids? Ah, quite a few. Perfect. So you can start using this right away. For all the others who are not quite there yet, the most important question of the night is, of course, where are you going to go? And... A little bit of a hint already, we have an amazing after party planned, <laughs> but nevertheless, in Berlin you have a million options and the question is always, okay, what the fuck do I do tonight? I really don't know, I never know, I always ask my friends, but actually, Sarah has the app to save me and all of you right in her hands, so give it up for Sarah. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and uh, as Philip already mentioned, I'm facing the same problem as he does. I moved here to Berlin three months ago and I've been partying quite a bit, but every weekend it's the same question. Where do I actually want to go? And particularly, where do I not have to queue for three hours to get in? So, to, like, let me tell you a little story about last weekend. We actually went to a club, which name I will not say here, but it's just... We were there, we really queued for literally four hours, and in the end when we got in, the music was not really my taste, and we left after an hour. So, <laughs> so that's why my team and I actually developed this amazing app called Clubin, 
which will provide you real-time data on how the atmosphere is and how long the queue is so that you can make a good decision on where to go. So let's check it out. So at the first page, like when you, when you uh, after registering to the app, you can see this amazing app which already gives you some hint where the good parties are at. And uh, I can see these dark purple uh, dots actually, <laughs> which are the locations of the best parties, the best rated parties tonight. But since I don't really have an idea where I wanna go, I think I will need some inspiration and click on the hot button. So, and this is really giving me a live rating of the best uh, rated clubs. You can see KitKat at the front <laughs> and on the top. <laughs> People know. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I'm not going to check out this one. What got me more interested is that actually 10 of my friends are already at the factory in Berlin. So I'm really interested what's going on there. So I click on there to see more information. I can see all of my friends there. I can get some additional information on what the club is like. And um, yeah, it sounds really interesting. So let's get some direction because I don't know where it is. Oh, that's cool. I'm basically already there. <laughs> I didn't know that, so then let's just check in. So at this point, um, it gets my geolocations and it tells me if I'm close to a club, I can check in. So let's just do it, tap to check in. And this is where I'm able to give a rating. I would say the atmosphere is really awesome. I didn't have to queue at all, so this is so on. <laughs> Share it with the community. So that's cool. And the good thing about the app is also that it opens a chat room like only for those people who are checked in into this particular location and it will like stay open as long as you are there. So let's see who's there and let's start to chat with other people. <laughs> and you can see like just when I checked in I already received a message from this handsome young gentleman. We can check out his profile to see, yes. A passionate coder, so definitely let's write back to him, 100%. <laughs> so he's writing like that he saw me dancing with Philip. <laughs> and I, I keep it short, he wants to meet me at the bar and le let's write back like, let's say in five minutes I'll be there. <laughs> My wingman has own ideas about what to write. <laughs> so that's really great. Let's see if he answers. So I'm going to meet Kai in five minutes at the bar. But before I go there, I actually want to say a big thank you to my team, Niklas and Kai, actually. So <laughs> please come on stage. Thanks. Kai, you and me are going to have a very serious talk after this. <laughs> not cool, dude. Not cool. Uh, up next, actually, ah, another question, another round of questions. Who here was born and raised in Berlin? One, two, three, four, a total of five, six, uh, even seven, seven. Wow. Out of a hundred? Ah. Typical Berlin. <laughs> Always the same. But what do you do if you're new to a city? Well, you want to discover it. Of course, you want to discover it. And that's where Lito and his team have built an amazing app. Give it up for Lito. Hello, everybody. I'm Lito, and I'm going to introduce you to Localo. Okay, who here has experienced this situation? <laughs> well, I have. I'm a passionate traveler, and oftentimes, like, I love exploring a city just by walking around, but oftentimes, I find myself a bit lost, and I feel like I missed out on the best attractions. Of course, I could book a tour guide, you're gonna say, but that's not really my thing, you know? They are costly, and then I would be bound to a specific time, 
and I have no guarantee that the tour guide is entertaining. So um, I thought there was no solution to my travel dilemma, honestly. But th the other day, my friend Ferdinand introduced me to Localo. And Localo basically is this awesome app where you can book audio guided tours anywhere in the world, in any city. And since I'm already here, I'm just going to book a tour in front of you. You're really lucky. Um, <laughs> So here I am in the app, and I see that there are some, some tours, some cities, and also some guides. Okay, I see this Dommer, he looks pretty interesting. I'm just gonna check him out. <laughs> Super excessive hipster, and he offers some Berlin club tour. But I think I had my dose of clubbing last weekend. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on that one. I'm gonna head back to the, to the home menu and look for all the tours that are offered in Berlin. And in Berlin, I see that you can filter down for any specific category, so I'm just going to choose history. And here I'm going I'm to go for the historic wall tour, since I heard that's an absolute must for any visitor in Berlin. I'm going to see, and I see the attractions that are featured on this tour. So this tour apparently passes by the memorial wall, uh, the wall memorial, which I think we just passed by before, uh, before I entered the factory. So, yeah, I'm hooked. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that tour. Hello, people from the factory. This is Ferdinand again. And now we have reached the wall. Okay, what just happened? That's magic. So... <laughs> So apparently the app recognizes my geolocation and automatically plays the audio file where I'm nearest at, in this, in this case the wall memorial. Let's listen to the rest of the sound. Wall memorial. The wall memorial commemorates the division of Berlin and the death that occurred there. The monument was created in 1998 by the Federal Republic of Germany. I hope you like this information and now let's head to the next attraction. Let's head to the Mauer Park. So interesting. <laughs> so as soon as the audio file stops playing, I get redirected to the map where I see my location and I can zoom out and see the next attraction, which is Mauer Park in that case, and just head there. And that's what I'm about to do. See you guys. No, oh, ju just kidding. I'm going to invite my mates as well because they also did a great job. So, <laughs> so uh, Dominic, Ferdinand, and Tony, please come on stage. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you mu very much. They have quite a few tours on there, and I can only invite you to check them out. Um, I think there is a lot of places you can still discover in Berlin. Even I can still discover. I heard the other day that actually within the um, Swiss Embassy, you can go into the Swiss Embassy. It's right next um, to the Bundeskanzleramt, and apparently it's open for anyone, and there is a leaf falling down every five minutes, representing, I think, the fading life or something. Anyways, I never know this, so keep discovering Berlin. And if you do so, of course, especially for an app like this, you need good headphones. And in order to choose the right ones, Yash has just the solution for you. Give it up for Yash. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yash. And like many of you here in the audience, I'm an incredibly passionate online shopper. But at the same time, I'm also very, very indecisive. You know, whenever I'm trying to, trying to find something to buy online, I'm often, uh, often looking at multiple product reviews or taking recommendations from friends. And surfing through Amazon.com is no better because I'm confronted with pain after pain of recommended item that only looks to be loosely relevant to me. So wouldn't it be great if you know, I could find a tool that could cut through all the noise? Now, a couple of months ago, I was looking for a new pair of headphones, and I discovered the tool Solved. What is Solved? It is an incredibly powerful decision algorithm. 
It asks you a series of five to seven use case style questions to help you narrow in on the right choice. So why don't we try and find that perfect pair of headphones first? So I can browse in the electronics category, and I can see right there I have my headphones, and I'm launched into a quiz. Short, short sharp, fun, and engaging. So what style of headphones do I prefer? I think I'll go with in-ear headphones first. Will I be using my headphones to talk on the phone? As most of my Le Wagon uh, colleagues can attest to, I spend most of my days on the phone, <laughs> so I will say yes. Where will I primarily be using these pair of headphones? Well, I have a great set of speakers in the house, and you know, occasionally you know, I want to turn the noise down, and I listen to a lot of music at home, so I'm going to say at home. And do I care about noise cancellation features? Uh, let's say no in this instance, because I want to be, remain aware of my surroundings. And what's my budget? I haven't been paid a salary in a very, very long time. <laughs> so I'm going to say it's $50. And boom, we are calculating the perfect match for you. And here we go, the Sound Magic E50. And I can see some reviews there extreme, with people telling me that they're extremely satisfied with these mid-priced earbuds. And you know what? I'm going to buy them right now. And I am redirected to Amazon, and I can buy my pair. And that is solved, the decision algorithm. I'd like... This is going to go live soon. We're going to embed it as a bot into various mobile e-commerce websites. And I'd like to thank my awesome engineering team, Alicia and Mandy. Why don't you come up on stage? Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Yash and the team. Uh, I need a new laptop very soon, so uh, I will be your first customer probably. Um, up next is something that is actually really, really, really important for developers, A, but also for anyone else. The challenge you have nowadays is distraction. Distraction, distraction, distraction. Your phone keeps ringing, you get emails, um, you get WhatsApps, you get text messages, you get snaps. Does anyone still use Snapchat? Probably not. You get Instagram, sorry, you get all that stuff that keeps interrupting you. And that is something that Yatan and his team have built the perfect solution for. So give it up for Yatan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So I am Yatan. I'm a freelancer. I've been working as a freelancer for the last two years or so. And I do a lot of work, but I also struggle a lot with distraction. So I need my occasional Instagram scroll fix, or I get interrupted in the co-working space, you know, all kinds of interruptions. And then when it comes to the end of the day, I feel pretty drained. So I was looking for a tool to help me solve those two things, being focused and feeling good enough at the end of the day. And I found this one, One Breath Timer. So I'm just going to take you through how I use this app. So once you log into the app, once I log in, I just go on it. It has a how-to. I don't need that right now. So I just go straight into starting the session. And here there are some uh, presets. So the Pomodoro preset is the most famous one that's like 25 minutes of focusing and then five minutes of taking a break. Just doing that periodically so you don't burn out during the day and stay fit till the end of the day. But today I don't want to do the Pomodoro. I think I'm going to do something where I have to focus for less time. So I'll just create a new flow or a new preset. All right, let's call this flow stage work because that's something I'm going to be doing for the next about three minutes. Total hours of five and focus time 20 and minutes per break, five. Don't worry about it, this is not actually gonna be 20 minutes, so it's gonna be in seconds, just, just for your pleasure. Um, and let's create the flow. Now this is the second bit that I actually really like. This is very helpful for me because as I do wanna have my Instagram fix once in a while or check my WhatsApp, uh, I can actually put that in here. That way it's out of my mind and I can 
really focus on what I'm doing. Uh, on top of that, I want to meditate more, so I'll keep this meditation bit here. And I could also add a new activity if I wanted to, but at this point in time, I'm not, so I'll just save this. All right, now I have a new preset, and I want to execute that right now. Stage work. All right, so let's play and start focusing. All right, so during this time, there is nothing else happening but me focusing on my work, obviously. Sometimes I look at the timer, there's nothing really to see. I don't want to really do anything else but just focus. I know I'm going to get my fix a little bit later for whatever I want to do. And once that is done, something else shows up, boom. What do I want to do in my break? I want to meditate because it's pretty late. It's always good to meditate. It keeps you refreshed. And when I go into the meditation bit, actually it shows you a guided meditation which I would normally play, but this occasion it doesn't really fit. So let's just play it and pretend like I'm meditating. All right, om, 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 om. All right, meditation is over. I feel great, I feel super refreshed. And uh, I could do another session, but I think I have uh, something else to do right now. So instead of uh, doing that, I'll just go and check my stats before I leave the app. All right, here I have my daily stats. So in my daily stats, I can see how much time I've been spending focusing and how much time I've been spending actually on each activity, which is super useful for me because I want to meditate more, I want to focus more, I want to do less social media, and I can compare that to the lifetime stats, which are just below. And I, yeah, so this, this app has actually really helped me a lot uh, to focus and to, to get more stuff done and still feel good at the end of the day. So I'm going to continue using this app forever and it's going to be better and better. And with that said, I'd like to thank you for that part and welcome my team on stage who have helped me build this is David, <laughs> Travis, and Catalina. Thank you very much, Yatan. Um, I think this is something as knowledge workers that we should all use. So it's extremely easy. Um, if afterwards you're interested, just go to them. They will give you the link again and you can start using it right away. Now, next, we're gonna go back a little bit into the travel category and into a very particular problem. What do you do if you can't travel. And Uma has just the perfect solution for that. Give it up for Uma. Hey guys, how you going? Um, I'm Uma. I'm a journalist. I live in London and like most people my age and dare I say probably most people in this room, I like to spend my spare cash traveling. Which is why for this weekend, I booked myself in for a ticket from London to Paris. The problem is that I'm not going to be able to make my train. My boss just called and said, I've got to work this weekend. So I've been left with a ticket that I can't use. I want to sell it. Last time I tried to sell it, the problem was that somebody took my ticket and never actually paid. And I don't want to use Facebook again because that's what I've learned to happen. And so I ask around with all of my friends and then I hear about this awesome website called Easy Ticks. So I go on and I take a little bit of a look and I find out that it's really, really easy, it's instant and it's secure and that's the most important thing to me. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And so I decide I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to sell my ticket on Easy Ticks. Now, I decide to sell my ticket, <laughs> which, will sell, which will move in a second. Uh, do you want to hear a, a joke in the meantime? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you call what do you call a train full of bubble gum? I'll tell you the end at the end. <laughs> uh, so I realise I've got to upload my ID, and I guess that kind of makes sense because if anything goes wrong, if anything dodgy happens, they can track me down. They can also make sure that my name, what I tell them about me, matches an actual ID. 
I've also got to put in my phone number. And again, that makes sense to me. If anything goes wrong, they've got to be able to contact me, track me down, make sure that the ticket is what I say it's going to be. And, and then I hear my phone go off. I've got a little token um, and I'm going to read out the number they've just sent me, 7583120. That's 7583120. And boom, just like that you see the verified come up. So I know that I'm verified, they know I'm legit, and they also know that I'm not a bot. Uh, I'm an actual human being in possession of the phone that I told them I was in possession of. So it's pretty trustworthy. I then decide I'm going to actually sell my ticket, what I came here for, and so I enter in the details. It's departing from London, it's going to Paris, it's going tomorrow at 8 a.m. And, yeah, at 8 a.m. And the booking reference is A-Z-W-Q-S-T. The last name on the ticket is Patel, it's my own last name. And I decide, well, I'm gonna sell it a little bit cheaper than what I bought it for, I wanna make sure that it actually sells, so I put in 90 euros as, as the price. And then just like that, I can automatically see that my tickets are um, being sold, I can check that the details are all correct, exactly what I entered, and I can monitor it as well. The thing is, I'm not quite done yet. I still wanna go to Paris, just not this weekend because I can't. And so I decide I'm gonna use Easy Ticks to buy a ticket. And so I search for uh, Paris to London, because I love, sorry, London to Paris, because I love Paris. And I'm gonna go July 13th, because I know my boss isn't going to ask me to work that weekend. Wow, there's all of these results from a lot of different people. I can see that they're verified, which is excellent. I scroll through, there's different dates, different times. I'm gonna click on the one at 6.30, yeah. 6.30, that'll be after work, 80 euros. And great, I can see Adam's already sold a ticket. He's a verified seller, and there's a secure payment method as well, which is, as I mentioned earlier, essential for me. So yeah, those are all the tickets, all the details I wanted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna go there. This is brilliant. Uh, it's a secure way of paying. It makes sure that the money I, I want to give to the seller actually goes there instantaneously, which was a problem for me for Facebook. And it makes sure that uh, it's, you know, it's secure that no one's trying to steal my money and run away. <laughs> and the booking confirmation comes up. This is exactly what I need to actually hop on the train from London to Paris. It's got the last name of the ticket, it's got the booking reference, and it was instantaneous. I click on the download your ticket, I don't need it because I've got all the details, but just to make sure everything's legit, I can see the details of the ticket and they've popped up there, which is perfect. Now I go back to my dashboard and I see that it's there, it's purchased. So on the day, if I forget my details, which I'm pretty likely to do, I can click on see that I'm leaving at 6.30, it's in my tabs and I can monitor it as I want. And also, as you can see, there's a little notification there, which is amazing. And I can see that it's already sold, just in that process, already sold. That's super, super quick. Uh, excellent, perfect. I'm just gonna, I mean, it, it seemed a little bit quick though. I mean, I'm sure it's legit, but I'm sh it just seemed a little bit quick. So I'm gonna go contact that human resources department. And, uh, and just make sure that it's actually sold, which is perfect for me because, I mean, most of these websites you're just talking to a bot or it's an automated system, but I want to make sure that I'm actually talking to somebody and if anything goes wrong, there's someone on the other side for me to contact. And, and yeah, wow, wow. So uh, it's definitely sold, your ticket is, yeah, well, perfect. That's exactly what I came here for. It's delivered everything I needed. It was really, really easy. I managed to both buy and sell a ticket within five minutes three clicks each way. It was instantaneous, I didn't have to wait for the payment to go through. All I had to do was upload my ticket and not think about it again. And also, it was secure. If anything goes wrong, there's someone for me to contact. I've got uh, my phone number checked. The ticket reference is also checked across a database to make sure that it's legitimate. And uh, yeah, it's instantaneous, and that's, that's easy ticks. <laughs> if I could get the rest of the team to come up. Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's a choo-choo train. Yeah, it's the, it's the train full of bubblegum. It's a choo-choo train. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Uma. Now, going from traveling from one city to another, we're going to go back to, okay, discovering a city. 
You might not know this about me, but I actually know all the best kebab places in Berlin. And yes, I do go there regularly. <laughs> am I going to tell you whether, if you tell me Mustafa's, by the way, I will slap you. Uh, am I going to tell you where they are? No. But if you ask really nicely, I might actually create a tour of them. And that's what Simon and his group have built. Give it up for Simon. Hi, my name is Simon, and I absolutely love traveling and sightseeing. But usually, I don't have enough time to plan my trips ahead. So I end up at my destinations trying to decide where to go to. And it's always the same. It's kind of, you know, figuring out which sites are worth it, which sites are the important sites. And this is such a pain. It's time consuming, it's not very efficient, and how should I know what are the impo most important sites? But just recently, I came across a platform called uh, City Hikes, which is basically a platform where locals can upload routes and give special recommendations and tips for their cities. So let's check out this site. So you can choose from a selection of cool cities, and then you can pick a route which fits your need, like, for example, if you're more touristic guy or more historical or cultural, you can find whatever route you want to, and then you can customize it. And last but not least, you can export it. So let's check out what routes they already got. Cool. So they already got a bunch of routes, one in Munich, pretty nice pictures, here London, and already, yeah, Zurich. And there, there are two routes for Berlin already. So that's pretty cool. But as I'm flying to Barcelona next weekend, I want to see if they already got something for Barcelona and filter for Barcelona. Awesome. I really like this route. It's beautiful pictures, uh, decent rating, and the distance is absolutely fine with me. So let's check out this one. I would definitely want to hike this one, and I'm really looking forward to my trip. So now on the right side, we can see the, the map, and on the left side, we can see um, all the sites. We are starting at Parc Guell, right at the top of the kind of like Barcelona, the hills, and then going down into the city center. And yeah, that looks pretty cool. I don't know all of the sites, but actually that's a good sign because I kind of want to be inspired and I want to outsource the burden of um, you know, deciding where to go to. So let's check out the reviews first. So yeah, people were pretty happy about it, so that's cool. Hmm. But how come Sagrada Familia is missing? I heard this is a must-see. So I want to customize this one. So I now have, um, now, so now I'm going to add Sagrada Familia. Yeah, Sagrada Familia, and then add it to our route. So now I have my very own copy um, of a customized route, but it's based on a local route. But this doesn't really make sense. I want to go to the Sagrada Familia, Familia right after Pacuel. I think that's more fun. So let's put that as on the second position. So it's updating instantly. Perfect, so that looks awesome. So that's now our route. So I'm gonna save this one. Excellent, and then export it. So what are they actually doing here? They offer to send the route to a friend, to an email, and yeah, but what are they actually sending? Ha, huh, it's, right, it's written right there. So they're actually sending me the link via, um, for the Google Maps route, so I can open it then on my phone. So let's have a preview on Google Maps. So this is basically the whole route. It's customized, we have Sagrada Familia on that, and all the sites are there, and yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, it's all downhill, that's exactly what I like. <laughs> so let's go back. Cool, so yeah, that's basically it. I hope I could inspire you to use our app um, it's, and, use, and enjoy the convenience of ready-made routes. Thank you to my amazing team. Um, please come up. <laughs> Nathan. Johnny and Felix. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Simon and team. Now we are almost done. There is one last pitch to go. But before that, you must know a second thing about me. 
I'm not only a kebab connoisseur, but also an aspiring author. I have this amazing idea of a seven-part novel about a little boy called Henry, who figures out he's a wizard. And I have this idea for quite a while now, but I never wrote a word about it. And fortunately, Meredith actually has just the platform for any aspiring writers or wizards. Give it up for Meredith. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Meredith, and um, once upon a time, I decided that I wanted to write a book. I have loved books all of my life, but it seemed so daunting. Who sits down to write a book? It seemed impossible. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I heard about a project called NaNoWriMo. Uh, it's National Novel Writing Month, and every year in November, people take the challenge of writing a 50,000-word novel in a month, which sounds crazy. But my cousins had both taken the challenge, and they'd finished it. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe this is my chance to write a book. But um, I started the same way everybody does. I Googled it, how to NaNoWriMo, and I found lots of guides about what I needed to do. There were top 10 lists for the best apps to write in. There were Excel spreadsheets so I could figure out what my plan was for the month. I read blogs, I followed people on Twitter, I spent two weeks on it, and never wrote a word. So, and I'm not the only one. 400,000 people signed up to take the challenge last year, and only 40,000 people finished it. 40,000 is a lot, but there's gotta be an easier way. Uh, so that's where Novelty comes in. Novelty is a distraction-free writing app that tracks your progress and helps you meet your goals so that you can finish your novel. Uh, it's completely writing focused, so straight from the home page, I can begin writing immediately. This is a classic start to a novel. I think this is what I'm gonna write for NaNoWriMo, so I'm gonna save this and create my project. Uh, I can add a title, I can set my goal, what, how many words I wanna write, and when I, how long I'm gonna give myself to write it. This is already set up for NaNoWriMo, 50,000 words in November, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that and create my project. And it takes me right back to writing, uh, and I can start my project right now and make progress immediately. Uh, of course, it's not November, it's not time for NaNoWriMo yet, but I actually have a project that I've already started. I thought, why wait? I'm gonna give myself a chance to do this in June. So if we go to my dashboard, we can take a look at my projects already in progress. Uh, immediately the focus is on what I need to accomplish today so that it's not about 50,000 words. It's just about what I have to do right now. We can see my project's already in progress. There's an inbox so that I can communicate with other writers. And beyond my goal today, we can take a look at how my progress has gone earlier in the month and take a look at my stats for my current work in progress, Memoirs of a Rubber Duck. Uh, I've actually done pretty well. I'm falling a little bit behind, but I have actually written every day this month. I've had some good days, I've had some bad days, but even on a bad day, it's not that I've, I, I, my app will tell me how much I need to adjust every day for the rest of the month so that I can actually still hit my goal at the end of the month and it will update dynamically. I can see that I've already written over 8,000 words, which is amazing. Uh, and front and center is my goal for today, 1,907 words which is pretty manageable. In fact, this morning, I sat down and did some writing, and I got really close to my goal uh, before I hit some writer's block. So let's keep writing, uh, and maybe I can actually hit my goal for today. Uh, writer's block happens to everybody, so Novelty actually has a tool to help me with that. It's so hard to stare at a blank page, so I'll click unblock me, and it will randomly generate half of a sentence, not a full sentence, just a little something that I can complete that my characters can do. Some days it doesn't work, sometimes I end up writing something different, but at least I'm not staring at the blank page. This sentence actually makes sense for one of my characters, so I'm gonna finish this sentence. Uh, and that's a great sentence, I'm gonna add it to my, to my novel. 
And now that I'm off the, off the, the blog, I can keep writing. But there's actually another tool I want to show you. Uh, I have a word stats here that takes a look at what I've already written. <laughs> As you can see, even without looking for my word count, it's always, it's always displayed on the screen, and the party parrot will show up to tell me exactly when I've, when I've hit my goal for today. Um, we can take a look at the stats for this novel. Uh, it'll show me my overall word count, my word count for the day. It'll also show me what words I'm using a lot. Now, some of these make sense. One of my characters is named Peter. These are normal words. But um, quack, maybe I need a slightly larger vocabulary for my rubber duck. He's going to have to learn some new words. Uh, I'm going to go back and keep writing. But I've hit my goal, so we're going to save my progress. Uh, and this is my other favorite part of NaNoWriMo, is the community around it. Because writing is not just about writing alone, it's about working with other writers and getting feedback. So if we go back to my dashboard, we can see that uh, my friend Kolya is also writing a novel, and she's asked for my feedback. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at her project. She's writing about the spaghetti monster. I'm a big fan of the spaghetti monster. Uh, and I've been reviewing this book, and I think it's great. Uh, it's just missing one thing, so I'm going to leave her a comment. All that's missing is the perfect ending. And that's my story. Uh, this is Novelty. Once upon a time, Novelty helped me finish my novel. Uh, so I'd like to bring my team up uh, and introduce you to... Uh, Kolia, Dan, and Loda, uh, they were incredible and we're really excited to keep working on this. Uh, November is just around the corner. I will be writing a book if you'd like to join me, uh, novelty.app. So who's joining? We should, we should build a group for that. Just like 50 people and everyone commits to it, uh, I think at least five of us will actually finish. Or with novelty, of course, all 50. <laughs> Thank you so much, Meredith and team. That was the end of our demo day this quarter. We have the next batch coming up in July. But before I wrap up, I have to say a huge thank you. I have to say a huge thank you, of course, First and foremost, to my amazing team, Alice, Clara, Dimitri, and Rich. You would not believe the hours that go into nine weeks of coding because they need to prepare the lectures they need to run the lectures. They are there the whole day to help the, teach, uh, to help the students. And actually, they get a little bit of help as well from our amazing teachers and TAs, Florent, Jade, Romain, Tom, Angelica, Antoine, Cyril, Elijah, Juliette, Luis, Marcus, Martin, Matthias, Max, Sarah, and that is it, I hope. <laughs> I think they've done an amazing job. As I said, we're starting the next batch, July 2nd. If you're interested, be really quick. I think we have five spots left. Um, and we have a hard cap at 40. Talk to the students how they liked it. Um, they will tell you exactly their experience. They will tell you how fucking hard this is. But you've just seen how amazingly rewarding this is as well. So. Without further ado, thank you all very much for coming. We have further beers. I just checked the fridge. It's already empty. I don't know what you people did to it. We had a shit ton of beers there. But we have more beers coming in a few minutes. And until then, just get to know the other people. Talk to the students. And Rich has something to say. First of all, another round of applause for all of the students. I mean, you'll be amazed how hard they've worked, you really have. But another person who works very hard and obviously gets very little of a credit, because he stands up here and does the presentation, is Philip. 
Philip's been running this for uh, a year, year and a half now. So he's built it up from scratch in Berlin to 32 amazing students, 100 alumni that we've had thus far. So big round of applause for Philip. Thank you.